As you crest the top of Millennium Force's lift hill, you dive down your 300-foot, 80-degree drop and reach your max speed of 92 miles per hour. You pass through a 169-foot tall overbank turn that sends you diving to the ground, banking left through a tunnel and up into your main floater airtime hill. You fly over the hill and get a few seconds of sustained floater airtime. You drop to the right and pass over two future segments of track and up into your second main overbanked curve. You start to slowly unbank, pass over the previously mentioned floater airtime hill and up into your third overbanked turn. You get jammed back into your seat due to the strong and sustained positive g-forces. A bank turn to the right sends you up into another moment of great sustained floater airtime. You drop next to previous track and into a left banking turn that resides in a tunnel. You exit the tunnel and get a great view of station and lift hill as you get one final great pop of airtime that sends you into a straight section and an overbank turn right into the brakes. Millennium Force is a steel giga roller coaster manufactured and designed by Swiss manufacturer Intamin. With a max height of 310 feet, speeds of 92 miles per hour, and 6,595 feet of track. Those are the most notable of the stats, but other stats include a duration of 2 minutes and 20 seconds and a maximum vertical angle of 80 degrees. Let's get into Millennium Force's presentation. Millennium Force is sort of at the back left of the park. It is on the far left side of the park, but it's kind of back, kind of not. It's more towards the middle, but it's closer to the back middle than it is to the middle middle, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So just take a look at this slightly dated map of the park. It can explain it a lot better than I could. And as much as I hate saying this, Millennium Force's queue and station have absolutely zero theming. It's actually comparable to what you would find at a Six Flags Park. Unlike a Six Flags Park, however, the queue line is actually very well shaded. Well, not necessarily shaded, but it's covered, and that's great. Luckily, on my trip to Cedar Point, I had fast passes, so I got to completely skip the line on Millennium Force. While well, not completely skip the line, Millennium Force has something really weird that they do with fast passes in the normal queue. When going under the ride entrance and entering the queue line, normal guests without fast passes will go on the left side. This sends them directly into a sea of cattle pens. But guests with fast passes enter to the right. Here they go up a ramp that turns slightly to the right. Then the two lines merge. I'm pretty sure they did this due to space limitations, but there is no way of knowing. And one of my favorite parts of Millennium Force isn't even part of the ride experience. It happens while you're in the station. It is the soundtrack. Unfortunately, I cannot play it here due to copyright reasons, but there will be a link in the description. And one last thing I need to add before I give a score on presentation. The view you get from the top of the lift hill is astounding. Just staring off into Lake Erie is awesome. For presentation, I will give Millennium Force a 9.5 out of 10. The only thing holding me back from giving it a 10 is the lack of theming. Next up on our list of categories is the name, logo, and theme. The name Millennium Force. The name Millennium Force. It's not good, it's not bad, it's not great, it's okay. Millennium Force's logo is extremely simple yet awesome. The logo features a squiggle of gray track that is meant to be the coaster itself, and below that are the words Millennium Force in bold blue font. And as mentioned earlier, the theme on Millennium Force is non-existent. For the name, logo, and theme categories, I will give Millennium Force a 7.5 out of 10. The ride experience on Millennium Force goes as follow. You board into one of three 36 passenger trains that are provided by Intamin. You buckle your seatbelt, which stays pretty loose throughout the ride experience. You pull down your T-bar restraint, which for a roller coaster of this size and magnitude is actually incredible. It amazes me that small-scale roller coasters like Incredicoaster at Disney's California Adventure have over-the-shoulder restraints. But other Intamin roller coasters like Millennium Force and Top Thrill Dragster, which are over 300 and 400 feet tall respectively, only have simple lap bars. And as mentioned earlier, the T-bar restraints are incredibly comfortable and leave you feeling really open. And yeah, of course, I will give Millennium Force a 10 out of 10 for restraints. Millennium Force is equipped with four great pops of airtime. Those being the astounding first drop, the first camelback, the second camelback, and the speed hill. Since I rode Millennium Force towards the back of the train, my personal favorite airtime moment was the first drop. 
However, the Speed Hill gives some great ejector airtime and the two Camelbacks provide great floater. For airtime, I will give Millennium Force an 8 out of 10. And for our final category, let's talk about length. Millennium Force is 6,995 feet long, which at its opening, it was the world's longest steel roller coaster. It only hold that record for a few months because later that year, Steel Dragon 2000 would open at Nagashima Spa Land in Japan, which is over a thousand feet longer. But the entire ride experience is about 2 minutes and 20 seconds, which is insanely long for a coaster that reaches 92 miles per hour. So for length, of course, I will give Millennium Force a 10 out of 10. And for a final score, I will give Millennium Force a 10 out of 10. Millennium Force is my personal favorite roller coaster at Cedar Point. Even though it doesn't have the height and speed of Top Thrill Dragster or great airtime and intensity of Steel Vengeance and Maverick, I just love the overall smooth and fun experience that is always consistent with Millennium Force. And very sorry that there will be no technical analysis on this review. That is because there are multiple videos all over YouTube explaining the issues that Millennium Force has had all throughout its lifetime. Have you guys ridden Millennium Force? If if so, what do you think about it? And do you guys think I'm crazy for ranking it number one in the park? Comment down below all of your opinions and thoughts on today's video. Anyways, I'll see you later on Hang Time Thrills.